Hello and welcome to the 4.4 version review. This video is crazy late because unfortunately my PC broke down and uh, it took quite a while to get everything fixed and sorted out. So unfortunately I also don't have a lot of uh, background footage for you, mostly just some of this footage that I've already used. But uh, it's, be it's better late than never, right? So welcome to the 4.4 version review. This version was looking pretty stacked. Uh, in the previews and like the, the stream and the beta uh, from leaks and such because we had a new region we had lantern ride of course which is the big event because they don't give a fuck about the anniversary of course um, but we had lantern ride and it just looked like a pretty nice and stacked version of content some quality of life stuff that seemed pretty nice but in actuality having played everything this version we got very baited, <laughs> very baited. I think ex our expectations were pretty decent, but things were turned out not to be so correct. So welcome. This uh, this video is actually gonna be less uh, scripted than other videos. So if I uh, stumble and stuff, uh, you know why? Because again, there was not a lot of time to work on the script. So hey, I just got my notes, and it's gonna be more freestyle. So. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we have a new region, we got Chen Yu Vale, we have Lantern Ride as our big event, and since this is the end of the version and 4.5 is just on the horizon, we can look at all of the minor events. Let's begin with the new region Chen Yu Vale. Uh, let's go with the quests in it first. The main world quest of uh, the new region honestly wasn't that exciting. Uh, the NPC, okay, she looked kinda nice, but all in all the story was like, meh. And it was very annoying that, you know, because we're not in Fontaine, we can't have Hydroculi, right? And the, we, we can't have Geoculi because uh, we, you've already, you're already done with the Statue of Seven and you got a new sort of Oculi system with the Spirit Carp stuff. But the problem is that in order to unlock the offering system, you need to finish the world quest in its entirety and then you need to skip one in-game day to get a follow-up quest that unlocks the system. And it's like, why, man? Like, okay, in context of the story, the offering system does make sense, and of course they wouldn't want you to then start gathering the, the fish, right, the, the, the spirit carp, after you did the quest, right, and you've already explored the, the areas, but like, at least, don't, why, why the need for the follow-up quest? Why, why the need to wait an in-game day to get a follow-up quest? At the very least, just give the quest when, uh, the, when the player teleports away. Or something. Because again, you need to guess that you need to wait, uh, skip one in game day. Yes, you'll get it on the next server reset. But why would I need to wait for the server reset? Right? Instead of just telling me, here's a new quest when you teleport away, or just a little bit of time passes, or just don't have a follow up quest, right? Just give me the fucking offering system right there. So it was very annoying to have gathered, basically, I, I had gathered all of the spirit carp, and I'm like, where the fuck is this offering system? I did the entirety of the world quest, and I'm like, I still don't have the fucking offering system? What the fuck? Super annoying. Genuinely super annoying. Uh, also, while exploring, you get fucking geo sigils, and it's like, brothers, you didn't put another system or some sort of other shop to waste the fucking sigils? Like at least make the uh, make the the shop reset, right? If like make the shop from uh, from Liyue restock or something, because like w I have like a thousand geo sigils, right? Because of the exploration, and I can only use them for Mora. And it's like, bro, what the fuck is this? It's a big problem with areas that are connected to previous regions. Like imagine we get a Monstalt expansion. What the fuck are you gonna do with Anemo sigils, right? So they need to figure that stuff out. Um, other stuff on quests, uh, the minor quests, like other like side quests, were fine. Um, the picture taking one was actually kind of fun. Uh, there was the Guhua clan quest, uh, which you can trigger in two places actually. You can go to the place like the Guhua uh, clan like spot, a uh, temple thingy, and you can activate it from there. Or you can find the old man that is for, for the quest in uh, in a Yalong Wharf, isn't it? Like the the pier, the pier, and it's like. I didn't know that. I saw a friend of mine activate the quest in uh, in Yalong Wharf, and I'm like, oh shit. Uh, but this quest, I had such high hopes, actually. 
Like, I thought they would have a nice, like, actual temple or something, like, a nice place, and it would give you some actually pretty interesting lore, only to get fucked in the ass, because th the story was, like, dog shit, honestly. Like, I, I genuinely was so excited to see any interesting things, because it's it's connected to Zingshu, a playable character, and you're like, oh shit, because the Guhua clan hasn't gotten really any sort of lore or any sort of attention. And it's like, it's about to, and then it's actually a bait. The the challenge that it has in the quest, like you you go into the temple, you like you visit a lot of stuff. There is some interesting like stuff to read, but like brother, make it in the quest, not just things to read while you're there. Uh, but there was like a challenge spot um, that you need to activate, and you need to like survive some stuff or kill some enemies, which is really nice. Except for the fact, but that the challenge that makes you dodge things. They really need to make something about the sound because whenever because they have like a bunch of sound effects playing at the same time and it hurts your ears. Genuinely hurts your ears. The sound effects layered on top of each other are crazy loud. And it, it, it it's a really big downside to the quest. Because again, the whole challenge thing either where you get a lot of rewards actually for doing each challenge is really nice. But again, having to just be assaulted in your ears from the uh, from the sound effects layering is crazy. But yeah, like the minor quests... Eh, I, I, again, I was expecting actually a lot from the Guhua clan thingy. But I was very disappointed. The camera, ta the, the photo taking one with you, which you're like, what, what is it, tra traveling around uh, Chen Yu Vale was pretty cool. It was pretty nice, like cute. But then anything else wasn't really uh, crazy. Um, but then we get to the exploration. Um, I have to say, this is the first region that I felt very bored while exploring. Usually, and I was actually able to, I was able to stream the exploration of Chen Yu Vale, but I actually decided not to. Because I genuinely felt bored. I felt not mindless, let's say, but I just felt like nothing was happening. I mean, like location wise, like I, I was actually pretty interested in Tenyu Vale because I'm a Baizu fan, right? And that was cool. Um, but the scenery just wasn't that crazy, I guess. The landscape didn't have much, except for Jade Mouth, and I guess I kind of like the Melilith walls. There aren't any really nice points of interest that are so crazy. Um, of course, until you finish the world quest, a whole part of the map is, like, blocked by fog. And even after you unlock the, the fog part, it's just a small island. And, like, it's okay from afar, but there's nothing much to do on that island. Puzzles were mostly just three types recycled. There was so much of the, uh, like, co the, the, the carp mechanic... Uh, recycled and just so many orb collecting challenges holy fuck so many challenges to collect fucking orbs where there was an orb and when you touched it, 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 it uh, more of them appeared and you need to collect them all or you approached one of the, the carp statues like the, the owl statue whatever the fuck that bird was um, and then you just had to collect uh, things again I mean, this whole thing was just a, a recycling of the the water orb from Fontaine, right? You know, the the one that you go to the gate, like the, the, the ring, and then you just activate it and just automatically gets you somewhere. And it was basically that. There were some lantern puzzles where you had to pick up a lantern and then you had to light up like a, a few spots, like a, some lotus things. Um, they were okay, but some of them had very strict timings. On, on lighting up everything. Genuinely, I, I felt like this was uh, stupidly hard. Like, I was like, what the fuck is this? Uh, and some of them used, like, the... Uh, it, with some statues, you could aim and shoot these, like, zip points for the carps. Um, but these statues were put in these puzzles, the, the, the lantern, like, uh, lotus puzzles. They didn't help much. And in many other, like, puzzles where they are, where they are in, they didn't help because they don't shoot these koi balls far enough. Also, depth perception can be a bitch, but yeah, like, I, I would I would want to shoot one of these, like, zip points in a specific spot, but because, again, these things just don't shoot far enough, it would just not go there, and I'm like, well, uh, that, this makes the puzzle way too, stu way, way too hard for no reason. It, it was very artificially difficult. Like, the, the land, the Lotus, the Lotus Pool puzzles were not hard, but for, again, for some reason, some of the timings on needing to light up everything was just very strict. And again, the not being able to really precisely place some of these like zip points also made them just stupidly hard. Again, stupidly as in not really, really hard, but like 
boringly hard, I guess, artificially. But yeah, like it was just recycling, just this the the carp mechanic, just again and again and again and again and again, and so many orb collecting challenges where most of the time half of half of the whole challenge or even the whole challenge was just automated, because not only did you have the zip points, which was fine actually. Like, uh, like, going from zip point to zip point with the carps was actually pretty fine, but then many had just the, the hydro rings from Fontaine. You just ended and it was just, it would automatically just collect the particles for you, the orbs. And it's like, what's the fucking point? And that's why it just felt so bored. Like, the landscape, it's just uh, mostly mountains. I, I actually liked the, um, uh, you wouldn't call it a furnace pot, I don't know how to call it, the, 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 the puzzles where when you get close to them, there's a, a lit up like pot or lantern, and then you activate it once, and then the, the light travels to you, and then you activate it again, and the light the light travels back to the the lantern or whatever it is. Um, and I, I actually like those. They had some interesting uh, things. I mean, most of the time you just moved to one platform, and that was it, really. You solve the puzzle, just activate the mechanic. But it was, really, it was actually an interesting idea that I actually liked. It was actually something new, not just reusing stuff from before. So yeah, I actually liked the the, the, the pot thingy, uh, where you had to light up all the pots by <clears throat> by moving the light from you and to the pot. It was actually really, really nice, yeah. I uh, One of the puzzles that I actually liked, but then most of the stuff, again, just wasn't that interesting. Again, so much recycling, landscape was kind of boring, um, enemy variety, holy fuck, enemy variety wasn't, it was very low, hilly turtles, treasure hoarders, and that's it, there, we got new enemies, but they were so, there aren't many places with new enemies to really, not justify them, but say that there was actually any sort of, of variety, it was mostly just hilly turtles and treasure hoarders, I'm like, really now, really, I mean, I know that Liyu is not, you know, Liyu is one of the first areas, so, you know, we didn't have that much enemy variety back then, but like, put something, goddammit, like, put the wolves or whatever, because this was super boring. Like, no new enemies, like, ah, uh, barely any new enemies. And it's like, so, again, for the very first region that I ser seriously felt bored while exploring. I, I didn't expect that. Usually, I'm just calm, right, and cool when exploring a new region, even, even if it isn't super duper interesting. But this one, I genuinely felt bored, and it's not about burnout or whatever. As I said, there are many points to why this region just really didn't feel any, any, anywhere interesting. So yeah, new region Chen Yuvel was really underwhelming. There just wasn't much. I mean, it's not just about the size. Again, there just wasn't a lot of new mechanics. Everything was super recycled and there were just three types of puzzles again and again. It's like, wow, man. Wow. Quest-wise... Not that crazy as well, so it's like, mm, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, new area, kind of a letdown. Let's get to the events. And we'll start, of course, with Lantern Rite. So, gotta say, <laughs> the story of this Lantern Rite was a thousand times better than the previous ones. Holy shit. I think I, I except for the very first Lantern Rite, like maybe that one still st sits very well, but this one was also super good. The first act was perfectly fine, a really good introduction of gumming. The second act was kind of boring, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, also, we got robbed with the Mountain Shaper and uh, the other guy, I can't remember his name, goddammit. We got robbed with the models. Fuck you. Fuck you, Mihoyo. You gave Cloud Retainer a good mod license. You, ma you made her playable, but not the other boys. Suck my dick. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, second act was kind of boring, like, there wasn't really much. Uh, third act was good, especially when Zhongli and Jia were, were on screen. The, the fucking father's, the father-son interaction was mamma mia. Of course, the third act also had the the uh, animated cutscene, which was... Okay, I'm gonna not gonna lie, though, I wasn't, like... Uh, I, I don't know, I wasn't the crazy, not excited, but, like... Uh, I was kind of weirded by the, 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 the gummings, like, whole thing. Um, I think I think it just took way too long, just a little bit too long to get to the finishing shot. I think that was it, but it was perfectly okay. Um, fourth act, though, my goodness, talk about a fully shoehorned act, I gotta say. So the fourth act was full of Fontaine characters, and they literally just put them in. Just they they put this act 
just to put Fontaine characters. Were there good interactions? Hell yes. But it was the last act that had basically nothing to do with Lantern Ride, just to use the Fontaine characters. You know that very well, that's why they did this. I would have preferred if the fourth act was uh, before the last cutscene, actually. Like, if the fourth act was the third act, then it would have been better. Because, again, honestly, like, it was extremely shoehorned in. Like, again, it was very clear, we're in the Fontaine patches. You can't really have a, 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 the Fontaine patches without a Fontaine appearance, and they said, let's do it, you know, just because. Again, they, it was good, but, like, put it before the third act so it doesn't feel just as shoehorned as, uh, as it is. Um, the second act also, you know, they have the cutscene with the new skins for Shenhen Ganyu. My goodness, the skin textures are so very low in resolution. Uh, and then they, they do the close-up and it looks like hot garbage, man. Because of the low res. Come on now. Come the fuck on now. Please ra like, raise the fucking resolution of these things. At least, at least on PC, you do these close-ups. And the only thing I'm seeing is fucking PlayStation 1 textures. You can't do this, man. It looks like dog shit. And speaking of the, the skins, holy fuck, what is their fetish with black and blue? Like, listen, I like some stuff with black and blue, but holy fuck, all three skins, Zingshu, Shenhe, and Ganyu, they are all black and blue. I can't believe that they, people are mostly talking about the changed hairstyles more than the skins themselves, the clothes. And it's like, yeah, because they're not interesting, because every single freaking Liyue skin is black and blue. <laughs> so yeah, like, that, that's, that's one thing. <laughs> But yeah, story-wise, it was actually pretty nice. A thousand times better than previous Lantern Rides, I can tell you that. Even if the second act wasn't, like, crazy, and again, the fourth act was very shoehorned in to include the Fontaine characters, just the first and third act carried this, uh, carried this story way ahead than previous Lantern Rides. And other Liyue events, like the Moon Chase Festival, way ahead of those. Minigame-wise, we had uh, three minigames, if I'm not wrong. We had a Guoba slash Yuegui game, we had a sort of, let's say, race minigame, and then a co-op minigame. Uh, starting with the Guoba and Yuegwe thing, was pretty good. It had some actual thinking needed, which is better than literally any of these Flash-like minigames, because I, I bet you you've played a Flash uh, a, a flash game, like online, that it was basically this, but it was, like, it actually needed some actually good thinking. Like, you needed to actually sit there, and do some, not complicated stuff, but you actually need to think that, oh, I need to move this, and then go back through this, and then go back, and then go back. But, it, again, it, it needed some thinking compared to other Flash mini games that are just super duper boring. Actually, a big thumbs up. An actually fun mini game. Uh, the Lantern Race was meh better than last year, since it wasn't fully automated, because holy crap, last year, it was just anemo rings all around. And you just didn't need to even move, and you complete the mini game. At least this time with the fish thing, the koi, car, the koi zip lines, you actually need to at least aim a bit. Um, it was still a bit automated, but much better than last year. But still, eh, still a bit automated, and also very simplistic. It's like okay, uh, it, it's fine, not crazy interesting. The call mini game was a snooze fest. I mean, yes, I've said before, I don't like the call mini games, and this one was very much a snooze fest. Like. Seriously, and unlike 4.3 last uh, last version, uh, where you didn't need to play the mini game to actually get all of the rewards, here you needed to. And it's like, thanks. I played it. I was <laughs> the whole time I was looking at the other monitor because like it was an absolute snooze. Snooze was just run around like idiots, and it's like, brother, really, uh, very boring, Su stupendously boring, <laughs> and again needed to actually get all of the rewards. Which, as said, included the Zingshu skin, and the Zingshu skin is fine, but like black and blue. Um, four star selector, of course, if you wanted to get gumming, um, if you didn't roll in the banners. Alright, that's a standard from Lantern Knight. Gotta say, though, of course, you know the discourse about the three freaking wishes they gave us in the mail. It's like, bro, no dignity whatsoever, huh? Fuck you. Generally, like, the rewards not increasing at all. Uh, unless you bitch like crazy, and even now that the that China, the Chinese community bitched like crazy about this land, right? Nothing changed. So it's like, oh wow, thanks, thanks, Mihoyo. You appreciate your player brace a lot, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, Lantern Right story wise, thousand times better than before. Not insane story, but pretty nice. Um, mini games, Yuego e Goba thingy, actually really nice. The race one is fine. It's uh, it's mostly neutral. 
and harmless co-op minigame boring. Then we get to the minor events. I don't know if I actually have all of them noted, because again, I wasn't able to play for quite a while, but we start with a combat event that happened. It was horrendous. So this combat minigame, you had like some stages with some trial characters. There were like three to four stages and you had, you had to choose like two, you had to choose a, a whole team, of course. Um, and you could only like use a character like twice. After that, they were, you weren't able to use them again. Now the game, uh, the, the event um, advertised that every stage would have randomly picked characters from a pool. Uh, but that was completely false. It was actually a full lie. There wasn't exactly a random selection every uh, every stage. Not at all. The characters were exactly the same. It's just that if you used some, uh, if you didn't use some, let's say in the in the first stage, they would reappear in the fourth stage. Like that. That was it. There was nothing random. They were always the same characters, even if you re-entered the stage, which was a full lie, and fuck you, if they were, if they were actually fully random, much better, uh, but the bigger problem is that the trial characters are an absolute joke, and some of the combos, because again, they weren't actually random, some of the combos were even worse, I remember uh, an elemental mastery uh, stage, like it, it had a buff with elemental mastery, uh, that had electrocharged, and I'm like, okay, Electrocharge isn't really a, a really powerful thingy, right? You have an EM stage and you don't have Dendro, and they had to put a, I remember, they had to put a second stage with EM just for Dendro and Aggravate, and I'm like, really now? You couldn't think of any other stage and had to put two of them? Because one doesn't have the Dendro characters, like, okay, it could have been Bloom, but anyways, yeah, they had an EM stage that was full on Electrocharged, but there were barely any Anemo characters. Like, there was no Sucrose, which is the big character in something like Taser and Soup. Uh, there was there was Kazoo, Kazoo, <laughs> Kazuzu, that's how I, there was Kazuha, and he was okay, and then Cloud Retainer. But Cloud Retainer is not for Electrocharge or, or Taser, and I'm like, why? And then, oh my god, in this stage, they had Eula, Eula, what the fuck is Eula in that Elemental Mastery stage? What the fuck, I saw it, I saw Eula, and I'm like, you have to be joking. You have to actually be joking. Who the fuck thought to put Eula in Elemental Mastery stage? D who the fuck thought of it? D are you joking? What? Shatter? Shatter is the EM buff? I, I was genuinely shocked. Eula in an EM stage. Wow. Just wow. There, there are no other words. Just wow. You have to be super duper stupid to do that. So yeah, some of the stages and the, the character selections were just ass. Like, at some point, at the first stage, it was about... It, the first stage was about losing HP and gaining crit rate. Alright. And they put every single character that runs Maricuse Hunter in it. Nouvellette, Risley, and Linny. All of them running Maricuse Hunter. And I'm like, you put characters... Okay, they, they can lose HP and get the crit rate buff, but they already have so much fucking crit rate that the crit rate buff goes to waste fully. I mean, the builds were shit, so it doesn't go to waste, but I'm like, this is not a good example. <laughs> uh, but speaking of the builds, holy fuck, they gave Linny the royal bow. I, I, I can prepare a full-on rant about this, this thing, but I'll just say that. Linny on royal bow. That's all. That's all. I won't go deeper. <laughs> but yeah, many of the builds were just dog shit characters dealt no damage. I think I genuinely like trying to do some different combos with characters because the builds were so dog shit. Um, I actually failed some of the stages because again, Yule on an EM on an EM stage. Imagine that. It's like, bro. <laughs> so yeah, and it was just horrendous garbage. The, these characters, of course, are built like dog shit, and they set a horrendous example. Even if you have. Even if we now we have the recommended artifact sets and recommended like stats and stuff, you still don't. It's <laughs> like imagine imagine playing the trial characters built by Bihoyo, and you see these stats and the weapons, and then you go to build the characters themselves. You see the recommended ones, and you're like, what went wrong? Who's correct? Right? Are the players correct, or is Mihoyo correct? Right, and if you learn that the players are correct for what they're using, you're like, you build up the player, the players that are like, what the fuck are these trial characters? It's like, you're not helping yourselves. <laughs> 
So yeah, it's like th this event was dog shit. The builds again were do were horrendous. The character choices in many stages were questionable at best, and they advertised it as having random a random selection every stage, but they weren't actually random. So congratulations, horrendous event, horrendous. Like the characters kept your constellations, but with the stoop with the horrendous builds, they still didn't deal damage. My fucking C6 Furina didn't deal 20k. I've never seen her deal less than 20k damage. Even on a hydro resistant enemy, I've never seen a deal less than 20k. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> Next event was a cooking in huge quotation marks event. It was boring. The character interactions were meh. I mean, it's. I mean, yeah, it wasn't interesting in many of the characters that show up. That is one fault. But it, again, the interactions were just meh. They just gotta fill the the two voiced event quota. They've built them. It seems that every like I don't know since Fontaine, they've seen that they've raised the quota of voiced events to not just be the main event, but one more, uh, one more minor event. And I guess that that this was it. Just fill the quota because the gameplay was way too simple. Why not just copy like a uh, fucking Cooking Mama or something or like Flash games where you know you would be presented with like let's say a model of the ingredients with some cutting lines. Right, let's, you know, the, the, there were three stages. You cut ingredients, you like, I think you mix the ingredients and you cook the ingredients, which is bullshit because I don't know how cooking works. <laughs> but like, why not just have it that, you know, you have a model of the ingredient, it has cutting lines, move like, you know, with, with any sort of whatever your con your uh, controls are, move a knife, press a button, it cuts in the, in the, in the spot, right? Make sure to cut in, in the correct spot. Uh, the steering, just steer slowly or quickly, whatever the game tells you, and then there's a timer for how much time this needs to cook, instead of press this button. Like, it was literally just press a button. Uh, that was the whole event, the gameplay, just press a button. And it's like, really? Again, just, just copy Cooking Mama or like a Flash game. Fucking like, oh my god, I, I can't remember the name, like fucking what, what it's called, Papa's Pizzeria had more gameplay than this thing. <laughs> uh, like genuinely like it would have been actually a really fun event if you actually had more than just a one button press gameplay so yeah really boring event and then the last event was a hillichurl event why the fuck are they trying to be a 90 2000 mascot platformer so you had to like you, you had this eye thingy where you could jump from hillichurl to hillichurl but it was an, a, a stealth section, literally ripped straight out of a fucking PlayStation 2, like, platformer, I'm not joking. It was boring, horrendous, it took way too long, and then there was, and then you had a, you went into a domain where you fought against a boss, and it was literally, I'm not joking, a Crash Bandicoot boss. <laughs> I, when I first played it, I was like, that, this is basically like Crash Bandicoot boss, and then... I thought of it, and I'm like, it is exactly a Crash Bandicoot boss. Brothers. <laughs> so, yeah, like, what the fuck was this? <laughs> what the fuck was this whole thing? Again, an extremely boring stealth section, followed by a literal Crash Bandicoot boss. The end. This event sucked. Um, and then, yeah, the, the, those are the minor events. I can't really think of any other minor events. I don't even I don't have notes for them because I might have not played them. Um, other than that, we got some quality of life, which is the quick loadout, and it's dog shit even for new players. We thought it was gonna be custom loadouts. It's not custom loadouts. It is very bad. Don't use it. Generally, even if you are a new player, just to re read up a guide or something, it's it'll be much better than using this shitty quick loadout. So yeah. As said in the beginning, this version looked pretty stacked. New new area, Lantern right, and then even if the minor events weren't that crazy, Lantern right and the new area should have carried this. But unfortunately, the new area just wasn't that interesting. It was pretty boring. Again, all of the stuff that I mentioned. Lantern right was good, but it isn't enough to carry this whole thing, right? It also got into the whole controversy, rightfully so, for all of the rewards that are not given to us, and I mean, the, the skins were not crazy because, again, black and blue, three whole black and blue skins, it's like, really? Um, so yeah, like, Lantern Ride itself just cannot super carry the version. Story was nice, but then, again, 
how the fuck is Land Ride going to carry this version? It can't. The, mini, the minor mini games, uh, the minor events, sorry, were horrendous, boring uh, at best. And this version, again, looks stacked, but super disappointing, at least for me. So yeah, that's it. 4.5 is just around the horizon. My PC is finally fixed, for the most part. And um, I, I'll wait to see you in another uh, video. Goodbye.